What is up, you beautiful people of YouTube? Glitches here, coming at you with another Dauntless video. But first, if you enjoy quality gaming content or informational videos like the one I'm posting today, then consider hitting that subscribe button and turning on notifications so you don't miss any of my future uploads. That being said, in today's video, I want to do a quick rundown on all the updates that are going to be dropping with patch 1.6.1. There's not too many things to go over, but we do have a new cell coming to the game, which is the first thing on the list. It is the Relentless Cell. As if Phoenix Labs couldn't throw off my videos any more than they already have. Uh, for those who don't know, I'm referring to my previous video I just launched, which is the uh, best build for the Subtlety Avatar. It was a wounding Warpike themed build, uh, which may now have to be completely changed depending on how good this cell is. Uh, it's called the Relentless Cell, and what it does is it extends the duration of the Aether Rush ability that you get when you attack a wounded part on a Behemoth. That is the crazy bonus damage, bonus attack speed buff that you get when attacking a wounded part for you or your teammates if they're doing enough damage. And at perk level one, it increases the Aether Rush state by 20%. And at plus six, it increases the duration by 50%. So that is a long, solid buff that you're going to be giving your entire party if you're running the Warpike properly. So I may have to change a few things on my Warpike builds. We'll see how good this cell is, but I'm really excited to test it out. Moving on for balance changes, we have some reward cash updates. Thanks to your feedback, we're rebalancing the reward cash to better align with the way you play Dauntless. We want to properly reward you for spending time in the Shattered Isles, and we feel these changes are a step in the right direction. We will be keeping a close eye on this system and continue to iterate as your feedback comes in. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw the roadmap update, the little like image one that they did, but it said that we were getting a new cell with 1.6.1 as well as updates and potentially new items in the reward cache as well which i didn't see in this post so i'm curious if new actual unlocks are going to be added uh with the exception of the uh changes in general uh but as for the changes they're removing ancient crystal currencies completely uh that is a visual bug that is in the game right now they did have a small tweet or reddit post that said that they were going to remove that in this upcoming patch so that's what that's referring to uh players will now receive four weekly challenges and one daily challenge instead of the other way around it was previously one weekly challenge and four dailies uh the armor skin costs have been reduced from 2200 to just 2000 coins weapon skin costs have been reduced from 1400 coins to 1200 coins emo costs have been reduced from 1400 to 1000 and patrol keys now cost 400 coins so it looks like we're getting some sales on the items in the reward cache as well so that's pretty cool you should be able to unlock uh, a bunch of these uh, a bit quicker now moving on to quality of life the warpikes hud has reduced glow on ammo's level one two and three uh the renamed the life spring pylon to healing pylon added new description text for level requirements when matchmaking from ramsgate and lastly, the Slayer's Club button in the reward cache now says extend membership if you already have an active membership. Um, whereas before it was just buy it again type of thing. Uh, for bug fixes, gameplay wise, players can now use any loadout in a private hunting ground regardless of level requirements. Players will no longer receive outdated rewards, rewards in cores like elemental orbs. Linked Slayer rewards now grant rams instead of vault coins, which are no longer useful and have been removed. Uh, wounded behemoth parts now remain in the wounded state for 15 seconds as intended. Uh, it was breaking uh, a little bit sooner than that, so I'm glad that got updated. For gear, they fixed a bug where the God Hand and Prismatic Grace had incorrect crafting recipes. Um, this will go for the people that actually have it. Uh, they are actively working on ways to incorporate those exotics back into the game. I have talked to a few of the devs, um, but nothing for certain just yet. All Strike Armor now has the correct resistance of plus 10 before power surging. They fixed an issue where the 9 lives perk wasn't activating. And lastly, a weapon's unique effects and perks are correctly displayed when they are power surged. Moving on to weapon specific, the Chain Blades, they fixed an issue where initiating the Reaper's Dance ability while dodging knocked the player back instead of correctly launching them into the air. And for repeaters, RIP. The Twin Suns will now have the correct power rating and clip size when power surged. Uh, for those of you that don't know what they're talking about, Mr. Trails just did a funny meme video about this. Uh, the Twin Suns are the exotic repeaters, and with patch 1.6.0, there was a fun little bug that happened where uh, if you went and power surged them, not only would you get like 100 bonus power, but after a successful reload, you got like 200 ammo in your magazine. So it was pretty crazy, but it looks like they're fixing that with this update. 
uh, for the quests. All escalation challenges now properly track when their goals are completed, and normal behemoth kills no longer count toward primal behemoth kill objectives. Moving on to the UI, got a bunch here. Fixed a bug that caused the weapon XP toast to display zero experience instead of the actual experience number. This was just a visual bug. The experience gained was still remained the same. The season countdown timer and the reward cache now shows the correct end date. Fixed an issue where some players would not see the reward animation or loot summary when opening a completed Slayer link. Fixed a bug where the DPS meter was not present while in the training grounds. Uh, a bunch of you in my Discord were bringing this up. Not so much about the damage meter, but also about the uh, move list not showing up. So hopefully this maybe fixes that too. Um, the Urska legendary weapons now have the correct ability descriptions and activation icons. Fixed a bug where power and resistance text were magenta in some of the crafting screens. Fixed a bug where the escalation boost icon was not appearing while in the airship. Escalation boost icons no longer overlap the other UI elements. When an Epic Games friend is removed, any pending Link Slayer invites with them are now canceled and removed from the social panel. Highlighting the reward cache in the main menu now shows the correct information in the top right hand corner of the screen. They fixed Slayer's Path nodes that were locking after they had previously been unlocked. This actually happened to me. I put a bug report in for that. Fixed a bug where the Solo Trials leaderboard briefly displayed really long Slayer name. Placeholder text when first opened. Uh, quest and Bounties has been changed to Quest, Bounties, and Challenges in the main menu. Primal Talent Tree nodes in the Slayer's Path no longer say they need Rams and Merits when the player doesn't have enough Fragments of Time. And lastly, the Primal Strike node now correctly refers to Stacks of Perfection instead of Stacks of Perfect Strike. They also fixed various typos. And then last but not least for stability, they fixed a crash that occurred when changing key bindings on the PC. So as you can see, not too many crazy changes with this update. Obviously the biggest thing is the Twin Suns fix and our new cell that we have to look forward to. Uh, I'm definitely gonna be grinding to get those uh, cores to try and pick up some plus threes of this to test it out. But uh, yeah, if you guys found this video informative, be sure to hit that like button, comment down below. I appreciate your guys' feedback. And as always, if you're not already a member of the Glitch Gang, be sure to click those links down in the description and join the Glitch Gang Discord. We have a ton of Slayers in there that are always looking for new people to hunt with. It's a really good group of people. Hopefully we see you guys in there. But uh, yeah, hope you guys had a great day. And I'll see you all in the next one. Later. Thanks so much for watching you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. Also, if you're looking to join a killer community of like-minded gamers, then be sure to click the link in the description and join the Glitch Gang Discord server. We continue to grow every day and it's filled with all your favorite game discussion channels as well as several ILFG channels to help you find that perfect group for your next hunt or raid. Lastly, if you're new to the channel and want to keep up to date with all my future content, then consider hitting that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. Hope you all had a great day and I will catch you on the next one.